Hi, I'm town meeting member Rebecca Weber, and I'm here to introduce an article called Racism Happens Here in the warrant for this special town meeting in October 2020. This article is a non-binding resolution that does two things. First, it affirms that we, the town of Needham, care about issues of racism and making sure that Needham is a welcoming community for all people. Second, it asserts that as we as a town investigate issues of racism, that we should do so broadly and that we should work toward tangibly addressing any issues that we find. This resolution is complementary to and in support of town efforts to address racism, such as Needham's new Needham Unites Against Racism initiative. The non-binding warrant article number 17 both acknowledges the existence of systemic racism in Needham and calls for the Needham Unites Against Racism Initiative Working Group or another civilian group to include certain areas of focus in its work. There are no outcomes, recommendations, or prescriptions of any kind expected here. This citizen's petition simply builds on the broad five-point charge to the NUARI Working Group and specifies examining the following areas of focus. Racism experienced by people in Needham. Discussions with town committee chairs to understand the role of racism within their areas of responsibility. Police oversight and accountability. Evaluation of alternative police policies. Racial profiling in public spaces. Housing and zoning policies an expansion of the Equal Justice Placard Program throughout all Needham Town buildings. This list of additions is not comprehensive, but it is in keeping with efforts related to race issues enacted in towns across the country. For example, Amherst committed $80,000. Wellesley applied for a grant to fund similar research efforts and Brookline formed two task forces focused on police reform and reimagining public safety. In this context, further defining the work of the NUARI seems like a proper and reasonable step for Needham. By passing Article 17, Town Meeting can affirm its commitment to a detailed and action-oriented town effort on racism. We need Article 17 because racism happens here. Needham is a great place to live. I'm proud of Needhamites who showed up on the streets en masse in response to the murder of George Floyd and in solidarity with the uprisings against police brutality going on around the country and world, which continue to this day. I'm also heartened by the town leadership's response and commitment to working to make Needham a safe and welcoming place for people of all identities. These past months, in the midst of the collective action in this trying time, we have been reminded that even in our wonderful town, there is critical work to be done. At an event they organized in June, high school students shared poignant stories of how they have been racially profiled at several retail stores in town. We also know there have been swastikas and other expressions of hate in our schools. As part of their Needham Unites Against Racism initiative, the Select Board hosted an event in July to listen to stories of racism experienced by community members. There, we heard firsthand testimony about the overt and hurtful experiences that many have endured in our town, and unfortunately, that remain a part of the fabric of everyday life in our town for many of our neighbors. Here are some excerpts of some of our neighbors speaking at that session. How you doing? Uh, my name is uh, Oluswan Fayemi. I've lived in Needham for the last 13 years. I grew up in a suburb of New York. I went to uh, Yale University for my undergraduate degree and to Harvard Med School for my medical, medical degree. So I'm no stranger uh, to be surrounded by faces that look very different uh, from my own. I can tell you that several times a year in this town, I'll have an interaction um, that is extremely unpleasant. And I would say every couple of years, I'll have an interaction uh, that makes me want to move out of Needham. Um, some of the reactions have been as bad as being followed home because a person can't believe that I live in Needham. 
uh, once having the police called on me because someone didn't believe the house that I had keys to was my own house, despite my neighbor even telling this person that this was my house. Uh, uh, our daughter, who made it through seventh grade, we pulled out of school. Um, she was part of the group from the or uh, aforementioned by, um, I think it was Jennifer, that was segregated. But it wasn't just that, it was that she had uh, routine interactions with people, uh, telling that she wasn't good enough, that she was biracial, that she didn't belong, um, people using uh, names like KKK in their group names and thinking that was okay. So we pulled her out of school. She's, she's in private school. The Lived Experiences Project, a collaboration among a group of Needham residents with expertise in social psychology and equitable leadership training, has put together a comprehensive survey that can be filled out anonymously. In just a few months, they have collected over 80 stories. The group will analyze these stories to provide some clear data as to where and how racism happens in Needham. Here are a couple of testimonies collected so far with permission to share anonymously. I've had white power screamed at me at football games behind my back while leaving school. I've had silver pickup trucks scream, get out of my town as I walk home late at night after work to the house I've lived in since I was six years old. Our nanny routinely waited at the bus stop to pick up my daughter from school with our infant son in the back seat of her car. One day a cop stopped by as someone had called the police on a brown woman with a brown baby in the back seat receiving a brown kid from a school bus. The policeman was polite and that was that. Then her car was hit by a BB gun three days in a row. On the fourth day, her rear window was shattered with our son in the back seat. Luckily, they were not hurt. We changed our bus stop so she would not be exposed to that danger again. Edom has also had race-based problems regarding policing. In January, a man named Marvin Henry was racially profiled at CVS in Needham Highlands by an employee who accused him of shoplifting. Four members of the Needham Police Department handcuffed Mr. Henry, leaving him on the sidewalk outside of Starbucks for over half an hour with no explanation. Marvin Henry had a receipt for his purchases, and he said so, and he was ignored because his actual crime was being black in Needham. This incident raised alarm in many community members regarding how and what our police force does regarding its use of force policies and racial bias awareness in their practices. According to the Needham Police Department's use of force policy, handcuffs are required for use with all prisoners, but they do not qualify as force, despite the potential to cause serious physical damage to the restrained person. There's also the social embarrassment of being held in handcuffs in public view. Shortly after Mr. Henry came forward with allegations and of mistreatment by the Needham Police Department, they quietly dropped him as a suspect. The town has hired an independent investigator to determine whether this incident constitutes racial profiling and mistreatment by the Needham Police Department. And meanwhile, Mr. Henry waits in limbo with his name still falsely connected with the shoplifting event in the police report on public record. We also know that racism exists in the structures of our systems, often as a holdover from previous explicitly racist policy, the effects of which persist today perpetuated by the status quo. A look at the racial demographic breakdown of the greater Boston area shows severe segregation. And this was no accident. Both redlining, a practice in the mid 20th century by which banks refused to approve mortgage loans for people in certain neighborhoods deemed high risk, mainly due to the racial composition of the neighborhood, 
and single-family zoning, which sets a prohibitive financial barrier to entry, have influenced who can move to our town and the very nature of Needham culture. Systemic racism also looks like a policing structure focused on control rather than safety, an underfunded housing authority, and the necessity of a METCO busing program to desegregate public schools in our state without solving the root problem of unequal resource availability. All of this leads us to the necessary recognition that racism happens here. The case of Marvin Henry is only the most recent in a pattern of anti-Black racism endemic in our community. This is a difficult reality to acknowledge, especially in a town that prides itself on being welcoming, respectful, and open and affirming of all people. But ignoring the reality that we sometimes fall short of our ideals is no longer an option. We all as individuals have a responsibility to do the inner work by examining our own unconscious biases and tacit acceptances of a racist status quo and the ways in which we intervene or fail to where BIPOC are disproportionately affected by poverty, over-policing, physical and mental health elements, and more. The good news is we are working towards making Needham the place we want to be, and we are moving in the right direction. Even having these conversations is an important step. The Equal Justice Placard Program created in response to the stories of folks who have been racially profiled in stores and public places in town, now includes over 40 Needham businesses. This is an enormous positive response. The placard is also posted in Town Hall. The recently announced Needham Unites Against Racism Initiative Working Group is a perfect partner to build on the placard program and other solutions that our group and others might develop in response to racism in Needham. This is bigger than us. This is an opportunity to gather the data through a broad examination of racism in our town so that based on facts, we can activate our imaginations, envision what true community safety would look like. This is an opportunity to look at our town and our region as a microcosm of a country that continues to directly and systemically harm Black, Indigenous, and people of color, and to make adjustments to move forward towards justice. It will take individual actions like ours in every town across the country to realize this. We showed up to the vigils. We put Black Lives Matter signs on our lawn. Now it's time to ask ourselves, what does real change look like? How do we move beyond the performative to the sustained, the substantial. This article asks our town to undertake the important work of evaluating how Needham can become an even more peaceful, welcoming, and inclusive town, and proposing those solutions. By voting to pass this warrant article at town meeting, our town meeting members who represent the voice of our small town can step up to state that we believe racism is a serious issue in our community. We can acknowledge as a town and a community that we will prioritize taking steps toward remedying it. This vote will affirm town meeting support of the Needham Unites Against Racism Initiative and encourage the working group established by the Needham Select Board to broadly investigate where systemic racism exists in our town and propose some tangible, proactive policy and budgetary changes to dismantle systemic racism and to improve the quality of life in Needham for all residents, workers, students, and visitors. This warrant article promotes leadership, action, and accountability for real change.